Imagine if one day you found a door that was connected to another world, and any items or skills you learn can be brought back to the real world. The story begins as a girl is being harassed by some men. However, we meet Yuya, a boy that tries to speak up against the men. But the men call him fat and ugly, and they end up beating him up. Eventually the police arrive, and the men run away. The girl thanks him for his help, but Yuya claims he is fine and walks away. We learn that he was taught by his grandfather to always be kind and to help those in need. When he gets home, we see his house is covered with graffiti, calling him names. We learn that ever since he was young, he has been bullied by everyone. Even his parents treated him poorly because his siblings were considered beautiful, but he was ugly. And when he got to middle school, things got worse for him as he would get beaten at school. It was only his grandfather who would look after him, always reminding him that being kind will make him happy. His grandfather eventually died, but he left his house and all his savings to him. His parents tried to contest the will, but in the end Yuya was given everything, but his parents completely abandoned him, so he lives alone and has to work part-time every day. At school, Yuya is graduating from middle school, but in his yearbook, there are only mean comments about him. As he tries to leave, he gets stopped by his bullies. They remind him that even though he is graduating, he is still their errand boy. Yuya says he needs to get to his job, but the bullies beat him up, and we see his brother and sister just watching from a distance. When he finally gets to his job, his boss is fed up with him being late and tells him not to come back. At home, Yuya has a depressing meal, and as he looks at himself in the mirror, he throws a tantrum and smashes the mirror, thinking nothing will change even after his graduation. He punches the wall, and it suddenly opens a hidden room. There are a bunch of strange items in the room, and Yuya thinks they must be his grandfather's souvenirs from traveling. He finds a peculiar door, and when he opens it, it leads to a strange room. He gets scared as a notification appears. As he reads it, he learns that the door is connected to another world. There are a number of notifications that tell him about various functions that are available to him like the ability to store items, and he can control who can use the door. Although he is confused by the functions, he thinks the system is like a game, so he decides to check his status. But when he sees it, he is devastated to find all his stats are so low. He looks around the room, and when he looks outside, he finds that it really is another world. He finds a note on the table, although he can't read it at first, he has a language skill which helps him to understand it. He learns that the owner of the house was a great sage, but he is about to die, so he left it so that whoever finds it will become its new owner, including all of its contents. The house is protected by magic, so no one is able to break in beside the owner. He finds a bunch of weapons inside, but as he examines them, he finds them to be exceptional items and extremely dangerous. He has a look outside and tries swinging his sword around. He falls over, but he manages to learn a basic sword skill. Thinking it could be useful, Yuya trains with each of the weapons, finding that they are all god tier items, and he gains a number of skills. Despite this, his stats still remain at level 1, and he wonders how to increase it. He puts the weapons away into his storage, but there is suddenly a monster that attacks. Yuya is terrified, but soon realizes that his house is protected. The monster is a level 300 bloody ogre, and it smashes against the magical wall. It grabs a tree, trying to use it to break in, but it doesn't work. Yuya thinks he should try fighting back, so he throws his spear, which goes right through the monster, and instantly kills it in one hit. The spear returns to him, and the monster disappears, dropping a number of items. Yuya suddenly reaches level 100, and he is shocked to see his stats. After allocating all his points, Yuya decides to call it for the day, and when he tries to leave, he gets a cash out option, which converts the items from the monster into money. Yuya is confused seeing this, but gladly accepts it. Later that night, Yuya goes through a change in his body, as it completely transforms. And when he wakes up, he finds his body is different, and his clothes no longer fit. He's not sure what is going on, and his mirror is still broken, so he decides to look for some clothes. There are magical clothes in the sage's house, which freely adjust in size and provide a range of magical bonuses. 
Yuya wonders about the identity of the sage, and he looks around his garden. He is suddenly attacked by a level 200 slime monster, but this time, Yuya calmly brings out his spear and easily destroys the monster. It drops some coffee slime and even a rare necklace, which has the ability to restore his magic power. He levels up again, gaining a presence detection skill, and he is already at level 150. He tries some of the coffee slime, and it's actually quite good. He decides to use some of the money he has made to buy a new uniform, ordering it to be ready for the start of high school. After that, he spent every day in the other world, and he starts to enjoy himself, even forgetting his depression. He would train and learn as much as possible about the other world. An elite goblin attacks his house, but Yuya has become completely different, skillfully fighting against it, and even using a skill to destroy the goblin. Time flies and the start of high school arrives, and everyone is immediately drawn by him. Even his siblings seem to be in awe. In class, he is approached by his bullies, but they don't recognize him, thinking he is a transfer student. When he tells them he is Yuya, everyone is shocked, and they don't believe him. When he goes to the bathroom, he is completely shocked to see himself for the first time since his transformation. After class, he is approached by his brother and sister, wondering what he did to change so drastically, calling him a loser, but there is suddenly a limo that stops, and the girl he saved is looking for him. He wonders who she is, and she reminds him how he saved her, and Yuya wonders how she knows his name. She admits she looked into him because she wanted to thank him, and she introduces herself as Kaori. She wonders if he would like to join the Osei Academy, and Yuya recognizes it as an academy for the super elite. We learn that Kaori is on the student council, and her father is the chairman of the academy. Yuya is flattered by the offer, but thinks he isn't smart enough to join such an academy. His brother interrupts, asking to join the academy, and saying that they are superior to Yuya in both academics and sports. But Kaori refuses, because they are insulting Yuya when he is her hero, and she reveals that she has already looked into them and knows all about their nefarious behavior against Yuya. She goes on to tell Yuya that their academy emphasizes personality rather than just academics, so it would be no problem for him to enroll. Her attendance suggests showing him the academy, so she pulls him away, and they head off, while his siblings can't believe what happened. They arrive at the academy, and it's a famous school filled with students that excel. He meets with the chairman Tsukasa, who thanks him for saving his daughter. Yuya says it wasn't a big deal, but Kaori says he was the only one that helped her. Tsukasa invites him to join the school, even offering to pay his tuition as thanks for helping his daughter. But Yuya is hesitant, thinking he won't fit in, because only geniuses are normally accepted. Tsukasa says that geniuses are just normal people that have found the right way to work hard and use less time, but Yuya thinks they are gifted with talent. Tsukasa tells him that everyone has their own talents, and through challenges and having fun, he will eventually learn what his talents are, saying that he is still young. He suggests Yuya to try out the school for a day. A teacher named Sawada enters, and Tsukasa introduces her as a renowned scientist, but her classes are popular and easy to understand. Yuya prepares for his first class, and worries he isn't over his head, but he thinks that things couldn't be worse than at his normal school. He gets called in, and he introduces himself, but all the students appear stunned. He worries about what they think of him, but they are all actually stunned by how handsome he looks. He takes a seat at the back, and he shares a book with the girl next to him, but she is a bit cold toward him, and he worries that she already hates him. Kaori wonders if Yuya will fit in in his class, and as the class goes on, he actually finds the class pretty normal, except the students are much more active and engaged. During their break, a bunch of students try to get to know him, asking questions like if he is an idol, and if he has a girlfriend. A student named Ryo stops them from harassing him, and he takes Yuya to the cafeteria to get some lunch. Yuya is amazed seeing the menu, and it's all free, so Yuya thinks it's like a dream. They sit with another student named Shingo. They start talking about anime, and Yuya is surprised they are just like him. As he eats, he notices that everyone is looking at him, and he thinks it's because he is wearing a different uniform. Shingo asks him if he is in any clubs, but Yuya says he is not a part of any. Ryo is also not in a club, 
but it's because he is good at all kinds of sport and has trouble picking just one. Shingo reveals he is part of the gaming club, and Yuya is surprised there are loud consoles at school, but Shingo says it's fine as long as they don't play during class, and as they talk about video games, Yuya becomes more comfortable with them. At the end of the day, he meets with Tsukasa and admits that he had a good time, and Yuya decides he wants to join the school. As he leaves the room, he runs into Kaori, who wonders if he is joining the school. He tells her his decision, and she is glad he decided to stay. She invites him to join her after school, and they check out some shops in a popular area. Yuya wonders if this is where she hangs out with her friends, but she reveals that she doesn't hang out too often, because people seem to be hesitant about her family and her father. But she says that he is different. Yuya gets nervous, so he suggests checking out the crepe shop. Looking at the prices, he is glad he has been cashing out from the other world. As they try the crepes, they both have a good time, and Yuya wants to try the other flavors, but he suddenly thinks that if he eats too much, he might return to his original shape. He asks Kaori how she recognized him when he looked so different, but she says that although he is a bit slimmer, she recognized him because his eyes still look the same. She offers him a bite of her crepe, since he wanted to try other flavors, so he takes a bite, but is a bit embarrassed. She suddenly realizes how he is feeling, but he also offers her a bite. She nervously accepts it, taking a bite, and some girls watch on, thinking they are super cute together. Later that night, Yuya decides to head back to the other world, putting on a full set of armor. He heads inside, confronting the monsters that appear, even though he is still scared, he cuts them down, and sees he has leveled up to 235, but realizes that the speed he is leveling at has become much slower. So he thinks about leaving his house, to find stronger monsters to fight. Thinking of his time at the academy, Yuya wants to find a new challenge. But as he heads out his gate, he suddenly hears a scream. He pulls out his spear, and rushes toward the scream. He finds a number of soldiers, that were brutally killed. He notices a monster, and it's a level 200 goblin general. Yuya can tell it is dangerous, but he sees a girl behind it. He throws his spear at it but the goblin deflects it. However, in that moment, Yuya comes crashing down with his foot, and the goblin is defeated. He turns toward the girl, but she calls out to him, because there is another goblin behind him. He gets blown away, and he can tell that it is both stronger and faster than him. But Yuya doesn't give up, thinking he has other strengths. He uses his spear to vault over the goblin, and he switches to his bow, launching a barrage of arrows. He then switches again to his sword, and splits the goblin in half. He checks up on the girl, wondering about the other humans in this world, but she ends up fainting, and he hears some men approaching, so he uses an invisibility skill to avoid them. There are knights that come looking for the girl, and we learn she is a princess named Lexia. Back at his house, Yuya thinks about the encounter, wondering if the girl was okay. But since there were knights that appeared to help her, he thinks she should be okay. Looking at his shirt, he thinks that he should try buying some new clothes, since he has made some money from the other world. We see a mall, and as Yuya walks around, people stare at him, thinking he must be some kind of actor or model. His shirt is enchanted to stay clean, but he thinks he should buy some other clothes, so he doesn't always look the same. Meanwhile, we see a director yelling at another man. The man is the manager for a model named Sho, but Sho hasn't turned up for their shoot. The manager gets a call from Sho, and learns he is on his way. But the director gets mad, because Sho isn't respecting the time of everyone there, who are all ready for the shoot. Especially Miyu, their other model who has been waiting all morning. The theme of the photo shoot is focused around being a couple, so it's impossible to shoot it without him. The director thinks about what they should do, and since everyone is waiting around to start, he decides to look for a replacement within the mall. As Yuya shops around, he is overwhelmed by the number of choices. He is approached by some girls, and he worries it's a sales tactic. They ask to know more about him, and even offer to help him shop. He doesn't want them to feel bad, so he turns them down as politely as possible. The girls are left stunned, and they start freaking out over him, but Yuya wonders if he dealt with them in the right way. The director struggles to find a replacement, but tells his assistant they can't give up. They pass by Yuya, and the director instantly thinks he is the one. Yuya gets approached, 
and the director explains their situation to him. Yuya is nervous to do it, but he thinks about all the people who are counting on him, and he ends up agreeing to be their model. He acts as the boyfriend for their shoot, taking photos in a range of different outfits and positions. The director tells him to look sexier, but Yuya struggles with the direction, but Miyu tells him he is doing well for his first time, and Yuya is captured by her looks. She thanks him for saving them, but Yuya notices her getting closer to him. The director notes that Yuya is looking kind of stiff. They move to their next location, and Yuya is impressed at Miyu for being such a pro, even though they are around the same age, so he is determined to give it his best. But Miyu grabs onto him for the next shot, and he panics as she pushes up against him. The director tells her to get even closer, so she puts her arms around him, and pushes up even closer, which makes Yuya even more embarrassed, and a crowd starts to watch them. Meanwhile in the other world, we see Princess Lexia, as she thinks about how she was saved. She decides to head out, and her knight wonders where she is going. She says she is heading back to the dark forest, to find the person who saved her, but her knight says it's impossible for someone to be living out in that forest. But Lexia insists she was saved by someone, and must thank the person who saved her. Her knight warns her of the dangers of going back, but she tells them they are all going to join her this time, and they wonder who she inherited such reckless behavior from. Back at the mall, the shoot is over, and Yuya is exhausted. Miyu thanks him once again, and Yuya suddenly chokes on his drink. Miyu offers him her handkerchief, but Yuya worries because he is sweaty, but he can't use his sleeve either, because the clothes aren't his. Yuya thinks about his experience modeling, and thinks Miyu is amazing at it, but Miyu says she has just gotten used to it, mentioning how she used to make lots of mistakes when she was still new. He thinks about how it's his first time wearing such fashionable clothes, because he never had the chance in his past. He wonders why she started modeling, and she says she just wanted to be noticed, because her parents were always too busy to spend time with her, and then after she started getting some fans, she continued because she had people cheering her along, and she liked that she could bring happiness to the people that saw her. She tells him he can also do it, saying he should take it at his own pace, and reminds him to just enjoy all the moments along the way. As they chat, the director takes a bunch of candid pictures of them, but at that moment, shows suddenly arrives, and the crowd is excited to see him. He approaches Miyu, saying they can get on with their shoot. He pushes her up against the wall, wanting to ask her out for drinks, but Yuya can see she is uncomfortable. He interrupts them, and Sho wonders who he is. Sho tries to punch him, but Yuya throws him away. Everyone is shocked, and Yuya thinks about how slow the punch felt. He worries about causing a scene, thinking he will be in trouble for beating up such a good-looking guy, but the crowd cheers for him, thinking he is so cool. Sho wonders how he lost, even though he does boxing. The director tells him to leave, because they caught everything in 4K. Sho runs off, and Miyu thanks him for his help, revealing that Sho has been following her around, and she didn't know what to do about it. But the director says that Sho's behavior has always been bad, and with this, he is unlikely to work again. He wonders if Yuya is interested in doing more modeling. Yuya thanks him for giving him the opportunity to work with so many professionals, but he thinks he isn't good enough to do the job properly, so he ultimately turns them down. The director respects his decision, and they end up giving him all the clothes from the shoot, as thanks for his help, because they weren't able to pay him since he is just an amateur. Yuya thinks having the experience was enough, but the director says it's only natural to be compensated for work, especially since he was the one who saved them, so Yuya accepts it. Miu hopes to work with him again in the future, and they wish him good luck. In their car afterwards, the director thinks it's a shame that Yuya didn't want to continue, knowing he would have been a star. Looking back at the photos, Miyu thinks about how different Yuya was, and the director can see her turning red, so he teases her about having a thing for him. Yuya organizes his wardrobe, packing all of his new clothes, and we see that his photo has gotten around. The agencies wonder who he could be, and we see a woman who is desperate to sign him ordering her associate to find him before any other agencies get to him. Seeing how he was able to stand up next to Miyu when he is just an amateur, she is determined not to let him get away. Meanwhile in the other world, we see Lexia's knights fighting against some goblins. The knights are struggling, and there is suddenly a goblin that appears behind her. But the goblin is defeated, 
as Yuya makes his appearance. They are shocked to see him, and Yuya effortlessly slays the goblins. Lexia is glad to see he is real, and Yuya finishes off the goblins. He treats one of the knights, and Lexia approaches him, saying she came to the dark forest because she had something to tell him. Yuya wonders what she wants, and she suddenly asks if he will marry her, causing them all to be shocked. Her knight wonders what she is thinking, reminding her of her position as a princess, saying they know nothing about Yuya, but Lexia insists it's love at first sight. The two start arguing, but Yuya interrupts, saying it's dangerous in the forest, so he invites them back to his house, which is a surprise for them, to learn he actually lives in the forest. They are amazed to see his house, and the knight introduces himself as Owen, the captain of the Arzelia Knights, and he introduces Lexia as the first princess of Arzelia, mentioning that she is second in line for the throne. She thanks him for saving them once again, and Yuya starts to worry about his behavior, after learning she is a princess. But they tell him not to worry, since it's not an official visit, and he is their savior. Yuya introduces himself, but they find his name strange, and think he could be from another country. Lexia fantasizes about him being royalty from another country, but Owen worries about other possibilities. Owen reveals that they were there to look for him, because the first time he saved Lexia, she didn't get the chance to thank him. She says she has been thinking about him ever since that day, saying that it's the first time she has ever felt that way, and she asks him to marry her once again. Yuya is overwhelmed, and thinks the proposal is just too sudden, making the princess think that love can't be so simple. Thinking about every romance novel she has read, love needs to come with obstacles, and it would be boring if things went so smoothly. So she asks to start out as his friend. Yuya gets nervous, thinking about his past experiences, but agrees to be her friend. Owen mentions there is one other reason they are there, and that is the king would like him to visit the royal palace, so that he can also offer his gratitude in person. Yuya is hesitant, but Owen says it's a royal command, and he can't leave until Yuya agrees. So Yuya has no choice but to accept the invitation. Owen mentions that it will take about five days including travel, but Yuya thinks it would interrupt starting at his new school, so he asks to delay the meeting, but Owen says that they are happy to wait for him whenever he decides to go. They take their leave, and Lexia tells him to prepare himself, because she plans to win his heart the next time they meet. Somewhere in the royal capital, we see a man reporting about their failed attempt on Lexia's life. We see a masked man, and we learn that he had sent assassins after Lexia, but they ended up in the dark forest, and the assassins were taken out by monsters. But the masked man wonders how Lexia managed to return unarmed, and warns his man not to fail him again. He takes off his mask, revealing a disfigured face, and we learn he is part of the royal family, as he swears to get his revenge on Lexia. Back at Yuya's house, he marks his calendar, for when he plans to see the king. He puts on his new uniform, and leaves to start his first day at the academy. Everyone stares at him as he walks, thinking he must be some kind of famous model. When he arrives, the director greets him, but apologizes because he doesn't have time to talk, but tells Yuya to remember to just enjoy himself at the school. Yuya is introduced to the class as an official student, and we see Ryo and Shingo who are happy to see him. We cut to a soccer game, and we meet a student named Roy. He scores a goal, and all the girls cheer for him. Yuya watches from the sidelines, impressed at his skill, and he is approached by a girl named Kaide. She wonders why he doesn't join the game, but Yuya says he doesn't have his gym clothes yet. We see Roy as he goes up against the opposing team himself. But he tricks them, passing the ball to his teammate Akira. Akira rushes at the goal, preparing to use his special move but he messes up, and kicks it straight at Kaide. However, Yuya manages to stop it, and even scores a goal in the process. Everyone is shocked, wondering how he moves so quickly. He checks to see if Kaide is okay, but she is left stunned by his riz. Akira comes rushing over to apologize, swearing to become her servant, but Kaide says she is okay, and turns him down. Ryo vouches for Akira, saying he is just a bit quirky, and Akira thanks him for saving the both of them. Later on, we see Kaori, as she goes to get changed for gym class. All the girls are talking about Yuya, thinking he is like a prince. Kaide tells her about everything that happened, and the girls think he must have a girlfriend since he is so cool. 
but Kaori and Kaede both insist that nothing has been confirmed. During his next class, Yuya waves to Kaori who is down on the field, but suddenly, some delinquents come bursting in on motorbikes. They surround the girls, swinging their bats, and all the students check out the commotion. They recognize the group as the Red Ogres, the most dangerous delinquent group in the area. Yuya recognizes them, and sees his siblings with the group. Kaori wonders what they are doing at their school, and Yuya's brother Yuta points her out as the director's daughter. Kaori recognizes the two of them, and they say they are there to get back at her for looking down on them and accepting Yuya into the academy. Kaori warns them that the police are on the way, but Yuya's sister Sara thinks they have time before they show up, so they plan to abduct her as payback. The goons surround her, and things are looking bad. Yuya wants to save her, but finds his legs shaking. Even though he has fought far stronger opponents in the other world, he has emotional damage facing the bullies. His friends worry about him as he panics, but he manages to snap himself out of it. He opens the window and jumps out, shocking everyone since they are on the fourth floor, but Yuya lands unarmed. He charges in, confronting his old bully Araki, who says it's time to teach him a lesson. He sends his boys at Yuya, but he easily dodges all their attacks and disarms them all in an instant. Araki tries to attack, but Yuya runs right past him, focusing on saving Kaori. But he is stopped by an enormous guy named Amori. The guy charges at him, but Yuya doesn't even budge, and he throws him to the side. Yuya gets to Kaori, checking to see if she is okay, but the boss of the gang charges at Yuya. Yuya manages to dodge, but the boss attacks with his bike. Yuya jumps out of the way, and the guy ends up losing control and crashing his bike. The boss is knocked out, and the police arrive. All the delinquents are arrested, and the students are told to get back to their classes. Yuya makes sure Kaori is okay, and she suddenly becomes weak, but Yuya catches her, and they share a moment. Meanwhile, Yuya thinks that the Red Ogres were useless, but he suddenly gets choked by the boss, who blames him for their situation. Sara begs for him, but she just gets kicked away, and Yuya continues to be choked. But Yuya gets in the way, breaking them up, and Yuya thanks him. The boss charges at him, but Yuya just stares him down. The students wonder what happened, but everything settles down, and Yuya wonders why he saved him, but Yuya says that even though they have been terrible to him, they are still his family, so he couldn't just abandon them. His brother is moved to tears, and they beg for his forgiveness, apologizing for everything they have ever done. He is joined by his friends, and he apologizes for the trouble that occurred because of him, but they are all amazed by him, wondering how he could jump out the window. Yuya goes to do some exploring in the other world, but remembers a warning from Owen, telling him that the dark forest is considered the most dangerous region in the lands, with monsters so strong that they would easily be able to destroy a city, so Yuya wanders about the sage who used to own the house. He explores deeper into the forest, looking for stronger monsters to face, when he suddenly hears a cry and sees a puppy being attacked by an orc. The puppy glows with a dark energy, but it's too weak to fight. Yuya watches from a distance and sees that the orc is a level 600 orc king with over 20,000 attack. Yuya thinks he doesn't stand a chance, so he gives up on saving it, but the orc continues beating the dog, stomping on its body. Yuya can't bring himself to just leave it, thinking about what his grandfather would do. So he decides to help, thinking he might be able to just distract the orc. He charges at it, but actually took it out with a single shot, and he starts to get embarrassed after taking so long to work up the courage, only to have things end so easily. But he thinks back to the ogre he defeated when he was still at level 1, and he starts to wonder about the sage who created such insane weapons. He checks on the dog, but it growls at him. He offers it a potion, but it ends up passing out. He quickly treats the dog, and it starts to take a liking to him. He tries talking to it, and he learns that it's all alone with nowhere to go, so he offers to take it in. The dog happily agrees, and Yuya suddenly gets the taming skill, making the dog his new companion. He checks out its stats, and finds that it's actually a level 500 black Fenrir, and he is impressed by its stats. He thinks about giving it a name, and looking at its black fur, he decides to call it Knight, who happily jumps onto him. 
They head back to his house, and he checks out the items dropped by the Orc King. There's an S-ranked magic stone, and the sword and armor used by the Orc King. But the gear can't be used by humans, but it's possible for them to be reforged. There's also a rare brush, which has the ability to stimulate hair growth, but he uses it to brush night. He checks out his own stats, and finds he is still at level 235. He finds it strange he didn't level up, even after defeating a level 600 monster, but he thinks he will work out the leveling system eventually. Back in the real world, he leaves Knight in his house as he goes to school. He asks his friends if there are any pet shops around, revealing that he just adopted a dog. Kaide gets excited hearing this, asking to see pictures, but Yuya gets nervous with her getting so close. She apologizes, and Yuya says he doesn't have any pictures, because he doesn't even have a smartphone. His friends find him a bit weird for this, but he just says he never really needed one. They tell him about the nearby pet shop, but they say they aren't free to go with him after school, but Kaide offers to take him. Yuya thanks her for helping, but she starts thinking it could be like a date, but she tells him not to worry about it. When he gets home, Knight rushes to him, and Yuya shows him the different items that Kaide helped him pick out from the shop. He gives Knight his new collar, and he decides they should go for a walk. They go to the park, but everyone stares at him, thinking he looks so cool, and that Knight is so cute. He ends up running into Kaori, and he introduces Knight to her. She starts petting him, and finds him adorable, while the onlookers think they are a perfect couple. Kaori asks him about Knight's breed, but he pretends he doesn't know, since he can't say it's a Fenrir. But Kaori can tell he is super smart, and happy that Yuya adopted him. A girl calls out to Yuya, and it turns out to be Miyu, the model he worked with. It turns out she also lives around the area, and comes to the park to walk. Yuya introduces the girls, and the people are amazed to see him with another beautiful girl. They start to draw even more attention, as people start to recognize Miyu. Not wanting to cause a scene, Miyu decides to leave, but looks forward to running into him again. After she leaves, Kaori wonders if Miyu is his girlfriend, but Yuya is shocked, saying that he has only met her once before, and that she would be too good for him, but Kaori doesn't agree with him. A woman suddenly screams, as a man runs away with her purse. Kaori wonders what they should do, and Yuya tells Knight to go after the man. They check up on the old lady, and Knight soon returns, dragging the man back. Yuya tells Kaori to call the police, but the man gets free, charging at Kaori to stop her. But Yuya gets in the way, easily disarming and restraining him. The crowd cheers for him, thinking he is so cool, and Kaori thanks him for saving her once again. They hand the man over to the police, and Yuya heads home. Yuya continues exploring deeper into the dark forest. Together with Knight, they encounter countless monsters. They come across another orc king, but this time, Knight shows off his skills, biting its neck and taking it out all by himself. As they continue, they come across a crystal deer, which is at level 630. Yuya observes it while invisible, and sees that it has an impressive magic stat. He wonders how he should approach it, but it suddenly detects him, even through his invisibility, so he has no time to think. It charges at them, so the two split up. Knight tries to attack, but the deer uses magic, creating an explosion to defend itself. It charges up another attack, firing a blast of water at Yuya, but he manages to dodge it. Yuya thinks they need to work together, so he tells Knight to create an opening for him. Knight jumps around the deer with its speed, but the deer retaliates with its magic, causing countless explosions in the area. But Knight manages to land a hit, and Yuya takes the chance to finish it off. He checks out the item drops, and there is a box that catches his attention. As he examines it, it turns out to be a portable bath set that automatically stays clean and even has a privacy feature to stop people from looking in. He is amazed to find such an item and decides to try it out, finding that there are multiple settings he can choose from. It's too dangerous to use it in the middle of the forest, so he decides to return to his house for the night and has a relaxing bath with night. The next day, they fight against a needle roller, which has exceptional speed. He struggles at first, but he manages to predict its movements and dodge its attack, causing it to get stuck in a wall, and he takes it out. He finally levels up to 240, and Knight also reaches level 510. 
The wall suddenly cracks, where the monster had crashed into it, and a cave is revealed, so they decide to check it out. Yuya scans for enemies, but there are no signs of any monsters. The cave suddenly lights up, as they reach a larger room. As they look around, Yuya is shocked to find a body, but Knight points out a book on the floor. Yuya checks it out, and it turns out to be the Book of the Sage. As Yuya reads the book, he learns that the sage was able to do everything, mastering every kind of skill and becoming as powerful as a god. The gods even asked him to join them, but he declined their invitation. The book starts talking to Yuya, warning him that as he gets stronger, the people around him will begin to fear him. Yuya wonders how he can prevent that from happening, and he suddenly hears the voice of the sage, telling him to find people he can trust. The sage asks him if there is anything he would like to know, and Yuya asks to learn magic. So the sage fills the book with all of his knowledge about magic. But he notes that Yuya can't use magic, because he doesn't have the magical circuits in his body, since he is from another world. However, the sage decides to pass on his own magical circuits to Yuya, telling Yuya to find happiness and to live a good life. Yuya returns to his house and starts learning how to use magic from the book. He starts off by sensing the magical energy around him, and he learns the magic energy manipulation skill. He learns that all he needs to do is to gather magical energy in his hand and just imagine the magic he wants to use. So he goes outside to try it out, imagining a ball of water, and it seems Knight is also learning. He tries shooting the ball at a tree, and it turns out to be ridiculously strong, blowing straight through the tree. Meanwhile at the royal capo, Olin gives his report to the king. He tells the king about Yuya, but when he mentions how the princess proposed to him, the king loses it, thinking Yuya seduced his daughter. Back at the school, Yuya daydreams, thinking about the sage's book, warning him about using magic, because the techniques he is learning are not commonly known, even in the other world. The teacher reminds them that they will be going camping the following week, and sorts them into groups of four. Yuya is put in a group with Kaide, along with Akira, and a girl named Rin. Kaide is excited for the trip, but Yuya mentions he doesn't really have any camping equipment, so Kaide suggests that they go shopping. They head to the mall, where Shingo is surprised to see Kaori joining them. Ryo also can't believe Yuya is friends with Kaori, because most people find her unapproachable, since she is the director's daughter, but she tells them just to think of her as any other student. Yuya wonders where Akira is, and Shingo mentions how he couldn't make it. They head inside, and they help Yuya pick out a backpack. They decide to hang out, and they end up at an arcade. Shingo gets excited seeing his favorite character in a crane game, but says he is terrible at the game. Yuya decides to give it a go, using his detect weakness skill, he finds the weak spot, and manages to win the figure in a single try. Kaide asks him to win her a cat, so he uses his skill again, and easily wins it for her. He ends up winning prizes for all his friends, and Kaori says it was her first time at an arcade, thanking him for his gift. The girls decide to do some shopping for clothes, so the guys have a break and go to the cafe for a drink. Yuya thinks about how much fun he had, being able to hang out with friends for the first time, but an alarm suddenly rings, as they are told there is a fire and they need to evacuate. Yuya worries about the girls, thinking that the fire would be closer to them. They reach the staircase, and Yuya asks the man if he has seen his friends. Ryo gets a call from Kaide, who tells them they are still stuck upstairs. Yuya rushes up the stairs, thinking about his friends, and he reaches the source of the fire. The sprinklers aren't enough to put it out, so Yuya thinks it's time to use his magic. He covers his body with a layer of water, allowing him to run right through the flames. We see the girls unconscious from the smoke, while Yuya rushes to find them. He manages to make it to them just in time, and he wonders if there is anyone else. He uses his detection skill to scan the building, and it seems they are the only ones left. He covers the girls with his magic, but the fire surges, and he worries they won't make it out. Meanwhile, Ryo and Shingo watch from outside, telling the officers that their friends are still inside, but there is nothing they can do until they fight the fire. Yuya runs around looking for the exit, but the roof collapses, and as he dodges, Kaori drops the gift he gave her. He reaches a dead end, and he realizes there is no way out, so he uses his magic to smash through the building and make his own exit. The building shakes, but Yuya manages to make it out with the girls. 
The girls get treated, and the firefighters reprimand him for being so reckless. Kaori's father arrives, thanking him for saving his daughter again, and Yuya returns the otter pin he picked up. Kaori hugs her father, and Yuya thinks about what a family should be like, but he thinks that he doesn't really have anyone like that. But when he gets home, night rushes to him, and he realizes they are family. But that's where this video ends. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.